Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy. Now, I'm sure I've made videos about this in the past, but um, I've had a few comments appear underneath some of my latest videos about spawning in vehicles for players. Um, and this applies for PC and console as well. So if you want to go about spawning in um, vehicles that are specifically for players on your service to use, then we can do that. Um, but in order for them to have uh, persistence, the best way to spawn them in is via an event and not via using something like a custom object spawner or uh, if you're on PC using admin tools because then there's a chance they could um, disappear. So what you can see here is we've, I've spawned in a couple of um, hatchbacks and as you can see if we open them up they've got they, you know they're pretty much complete all that needs to happen is the player would just take the fuel can fuel up the vehicle and then fill the fuel can with water and fill up the radiator and they'll be good to go and the other thing you should notice is they're fairly close together as well so if you if you want to spawn uh, custom vehicles in close together you need to make sure you change some of the changes as well anyway let's look at some of the code behind this so you can understand how to do it yourself so the first thing we're going to look at, of course, is your event.xml inside the DB directory on your server. And then if you scroll down to get to the vehicles, what you really want to do is just become familiar with the uh, the syntax or kind of like the spelling that's used when, you, when you're doing a, a vehicle uh, event. And the most common thing you should be able to tell is that they all start with vehicle. And this is really important with all of the, ve the event as well. They'll have a specific prefix that you have to use. So the server understands what sort of thing you're spawning in. So the first thing you want to do is, is just copy one of the ordinary vehicle um, events and then spawn it in say at the top of the events and then change the name and so my one I've changed to vehicle player hatchback like that and the idea with this is I want to spawn in two cars that players will be able to use um, now it's really important again to understand that when you spawn in a vehicle f with an event it will have persistence so it will survive server restarts um, however only the number of vehicles that are in the nominal will spawn in and those vehicles are, are tied to that event as well so if you've got a nominal of two and you spawn in two vehicles like we have here when someone takes one of those vehicles and use it it's not like another one's going to spawn in because that vehicle is tied to that event now if they destroy that vehicle if it becomes ruined then another one will spawn in so Bear that in mind when you're doing this, in the fact that one is tied to the other. So maybe you would have something like you'd spawn in maybe 10 of them for, for 10 players, and they would take them. And then maybe at some point in the future, you would say, OK, guys, I'm going to respawn them in again. I'm going to de delete all the vehicles using the uh, CFG ignore list, and then I'm going to spawn it in. Uh, spawn them in again as well. The other thing you'll probably notice as well is we've gone for a nominal of two. Nom2, Min2, Max2, and then down in the children we've got 2 and 2. And we, we're, we're spawning in the hatchback 02 blue. Then if we go down to where the hatchback uh, vehicle hatchback is, 02, the, the normal event, what you can see is I've used the left arrow bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, and then after it the same thing, dash, dash, uh, right arrow bracket, in order to comment out that. Because all of the other vehicles that are spawning in on this server will spawn in with a you know a chance of having something on them you know like a 10 percent chance of a wheel or a bulb or anything like that but these vehicles i want them to spawn incomplete so let's go back up to the top as, as well so there's that and also have a look at the distance radius now the distance radius is really important because what that does is it prevents events interfering with each other and people come across this quite a lot when they're trying to spawn in zombies or vehicles near where zombies would spawn. And it stops events occurring next next to one another so you couldn't get like um, a vehicle spawning on top of some zombies or, or something like that. However, if you want to spawn in custom vehicles and you want to spawn them in close together, so let's say you get all the coordinates from um, Daisy Editor to, to make a car park of vehicles you'd need to make sure the distance radius is really small now it's normally 500 meters so if you do this and you find you're trying to spawn in a couple of vehicles or more but only one of them will spawn in 
as long as you haven't made another mistake somewhere else it's probably because your distance radius needs changing so in this case i've changed it down to one meter so basically they won't interfere with each other when they spawn in these vehicles and so that's what the main event uh, looks like and then if we go over to the cfg event spawns what you can do is you just copy the name copy the uh, a vanilla event paste that in and then change the event name to match the event name that you've come up with and then put the closing tag on it and you can copy that from the bottom so you copy that and paste it there and then what you'll notice we have an x and a z so we've got like vertical and horizontal coordinates or well it's horizontal and vertical um, and then we've got an angle as well and what you can do here is you could go to i survive and you can just put your cursor somewhere and then press Control c to copy it and then you could paste that into the relevant place and that will then give you the coordinates if you were to use something like daisy editor you could get really exact coordinates so if you wanted to place cars maybe not completely next to each other so if you're in a car park it wouldn't be one in each space next to each other but like one every other space you could do something like that and that, that should work fine again you could get the angle that they're going to spawn in at in my case i've just gone one's facing east and one's facing west like that um, and then the, the kind of the magic that makes them spawn in with everything else the cfg spawnable type so in this description below this video you'll see a link to my daisy chariots update 1.28 slightly boosted loop files and what you want to do is go and have a look in the cfg spawnable types file which is this one and then just do a search for the vehicle that you're going to be using for your event so in my case it's hatchback 02 and you'll find a cfg event spawn sorry cfg spawnable types entry for that vehicle that will be complete so basically uh, all the wheels on spare wheel in the back radiator on battery spark plug headlights all that sort of stuff and a can of gas in the boot as well so you would copy that and then go to the cfg spawnable types file on your server and then over the top of the existing entry in this case the hatchback 02 blue you would paste that over the top or uh, of it or you could always remark out the vanilla entry and then put the other one in and that way when these spawn in they will spawn in complete so once we've done that um so we've got our events sorted out so we've got our event spawn sorted out and we've got a spawnable types sorted out the only th other thing that could be a fly in the ointment of this working is how many of these vehicles have already spawned in already so one of the things you might find is if you're doing this on an existing server it could be that the new vehicles don't spawn in because it's waiting for some of the old ones to go so for example with our, in this example here we're using the blue hatchback o2 hatchback the, the golf kind of hatchback if some of them had some of them had already spawned into the map using the vanilla event then our ones might not spawn in and um, what you could do for testing purposes or if you haven't got anybody on the server already you could go into your mission fighter on pc and just delete the storage folder but that completely wipes the server or you could use the cfg ignore method which is a better method where you go in and you'd add the type for the vehicle to um, the ignore list restart the server that would delete them all remove it from the cfg ignore list restart the server and then they would start spawning in but using the uh, the event the custom event that you'd come up with um, the way that you're doing it and so once you've done these files you would then save them validate them using an online xml validator uh, re-upload them to your server restart your server and you should find you then have custom vehicles spawning in so there we go so hopefully this helps people a little bit um and i guess one, one final piece of advice when you're doing things like this is that it, it's really easy to test them if you've got a local pc server like this i'm doing this on a local pc and i'll put a link in the description of this video for my to my video tutorial on how to get a local pc server going but i, I would say you don't try and be too clever with a lot of this stuff you know if you're trying to spawn these vehicles in don't be too bothered if you're trying to spawn them on in right next to each other you know in, in these intricate patterns and it's not quite working you know give daisy a bit of space <laughs> give it room to make mistakes um and then 
the game kind of looks messy in and of itself, doesn't it? It's the apocalypse, after all. So there's nothing wrong with uh, with with things like that. And don't get too caught up in um, things being perfect, because as we know, perfection is the enemy of good enough. Anyway, that's enough from me. Hopefully, you found this useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.